Guys, Phil Montelioni, the book peddler here, taking you on a little book pick. Today I'm heading way up north um, to, I won an auction. I won all the lots of the auction I want to win under the price I wanted to get them. So it was a really good one and um, material that I'm going to have a lot of success with. And something that I uh, am going to continue to go into kind of a specialized form with. So I'll talk with you about that a little later. But when I get the material, I'll put it under the microscope and um, show you what I got. Um, I'm actually going to do a future video on auctions. Last year I did more auctions than I've ever done before. And um, I've, I've known a lot of auctioneers in the past. I've worked with a lot of them, at least in my general area, um, and participate in them from time to time. Again, last year I did more than I've ever done and had great success. But I'm basically going to talk about the approach and also the little games with them and kind of just how I approach them and things to look for and be a little bit careful with because uh, I always recommend if you're starting out, it might not be your best option to start doing auctions until you get some grounding uh, and foundations laid and comfortable with it because it is it is a different it is a different kind of game. Um, but anyhow, we're gonna travel up. I'll click on the camera if I see anything interesting. Mom's going with me. I guess you need to get out of the house from dad for a minute. <laughs> so it's a mother and son bonding <laughs> car ride. Hopefully uh, there's not too much argumentation. <laughs> but anyhow. All right, guys. I appreciate you watching. If you haven't, of course, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you enjoy this content. See you in a minute. Look at this place. Unbelievable collection. What do you think, Mom? Mm -hmm. I don't see that every day. These are the books. Yeah. All right, we're going to get them packed and get out of here. What would you guys think of those mounts? Pretty incredible, huh? A polar bear, a lion. Unbelievable. The guy hunted, obviously all over the world so it was quite incredible i'm going to show you quickly half of the books that i got and then we're going to put them under the microscope so i can give you a closer look on them now i will say a couple of the books were stolen and so i'm going to get into that towards the end of this video and i'm going to make a separate video in the future about online auctions auctions in general um approaches and kind of such you can limit certain things that potentially could happen to you but was not very happy i would uh, love to mangle the individual's hands that did it um but it was nobody who worked at the auction and I, I, again i'll explain it at the end of this video but it's quite incredible never put anything past anybody even in the book business that everybody thinks so wholesome let me just show you a smattering i i'm just starting to process but as you can see, Records of North American Big Game, uh, Jack O'Connor books, here's some good stories, these are second editions, Fred Webb, nice and clean, I'll show you some more vintage books, and the better stuff I'm going to, Elmer Keith, I've had signed first editions by him, um, the better stuff I'll put under the microscope, like here's some nice safari presses with slip boxes just giving you an idea quickly because i'm about to head to bed here let me show you some of these nice titles right there and so yeah i'm going through boxes and i have more boxes to go through and piles and more in the car so what i'll do is uh, we'll get them under the microscope and uh, we'll go from there tomorrow Let's get cooking. Um, here's some of the Safari Press. This one's Baron in Africa. I love Saf Safari Press. They put out a, uh, a great publication here for collectors. And these are sign limited. Um, right there. This one's in uh, great condition. These things do kind of detract unless if they're from uh, the author. Okay. And some of these have book plates in them. And some of them, the slip boxes are not uh, pristine. But I'm just giving you a glimpse. Here's the box. This one's not too bad. But I'll tell you, I'll show you one that's a little bit 
collectors of this press, like any collector, wants the item mint. Um, these are these are pretty good shape overall. And the guy that I'm selling them to, he's not all too concerned when it comes to having book plates within them or the slip boxes, as you can see here, having its issues. I, I could fix that. But the but the one box here, the dangerous game. If you can see, I don't know if you can see kind of the, the the discoloration. There's a stain there. There's a stain here. This definitely detracts uh, value with these books. There's a little fading to the spine. It might be hard to see on camera. Um, actually, even it might be a little bowed out. Um, what can happen with this case? A couple of these slip boxes I had to uh, I had to trash. So. A two hundred dollar book. Let's say if this is valued at like two hundred, without the slip box, cut it down to like one twenty five. Any other issues, the fading, the this and that, maybe you're going to try to pull a hundred. If the book never sells, maybe at some point you got to take a uh, seventy five. That's the reality when it comes to some of these books. Look at the heavy discoloration. These books are not kept well overall. They're very neglected. It's sad. A lot of them in, uh, I'll show you one after this one. This one's in uh, pretty beautiful condition, campfires. Um, let me see what I price this one at. 75 Okay. Again, signed, limited, which is wonderful. I've had tons of successes with Safari Press. Now, when it comes to, like, Amwell Press and Derrydale Press, they are prone to to uh, get a lot of molding on the boards. Um, they, they just are some of those leather ones. Sa same with like, it, it can be like Easton if they're not properly taken care of. And it's pretty painful because it, it really detracts from the value. This book, as you can see, maybe you can see it, is slanted. So Bookman's terms, it's called a cocked. But you can see the heavy scuffing right here let's let's look at the cover the book plate the boards look pretty clean but you know this is a thing when it comes to buying large allotments at an auction and sometimes what you want to do is if the pages are gold now i believe you can see the soiling here if it has like gold line just fold it like that and it'll bring it out um, again, another nice book, uh, not that these are completely accounted for yet, but, um, if the individual doesn't have the books, he will be buying them off of me. If not, you can find them on the online site. This is a beautiful one, African Hunter. Um, look at these big pictures, really gorgeous, clean book. But again, I'll let you get a little more insight into this auction process and kind of the risk you you'll sometimes take when it comes to large allotments of books beautiful elephant great book here's another one jack o'connor with the slip box this has some scuffing you, i really am a believer in going over these with a fine tooth comb the buyer's going to want to no see want this noted the qualities of people's listings in general seems to be going down. I tell my lister, I say, you know, we want these books, deluxe edition. We want the buyer to be happy with these books and actually get even a better product than they even expected. At, at least that's what um, you hope to do. Here's the gold. So th those are clean. This hasn't even, the spine hasn't even been broken broken into it all jack o'connor very popular name very good uh seller if you ever find anything signed by this guy can fetch a small little fortune now let me take you to some uh vintage books now i kind of like out of the ordinary this is on hunting crows obviously we nobody does that anymore but um i like kind of i like different in this market this is very different uh with the jacket it's probably a $30 book. This doesn't have the jacket, but it's kind of amazing here. People were plugging crows. They're a wicked smart bird. I don't know if you know much about crows, but they are so smart. You can kind of befriend them. <laughs> They'll bring you stuff, and they're, they're, they're 
super intelligent animal. So like books like this, this oddball stuff, I do like having on my shelf. This one's on taxidermy. I believe it's like 1901. Paul uh, Hasluck. Okay, Tools of the Trade. So that's pretty neat. This one's neat. Even though these are ex-library, uh, 10,000 miles with dog sled, they're still going to fetch. So you got the tissue guard that's pretty battered. They're still going to fetch some money. I'm, I'm going to do just fine with these. Really cool. There's the dog sled. Hold on. I love this stuff. And other people like them too. See, this book is super slanted. Look at that. Still going to be okay though. Because um, somebody who, you know, uh, if this was mint with the jacket, it's probably a $225 book if I had to guess. Without it, even though being slanted, soiled, look at that. Heavy soiling. Still $40 or $50 book. So, here's a salmon and trout book. Again, it has its issues, but it's affordable for the average reader and collector. 1902. Atlantic salmon. I've never gone salmon fishing. I got a buddy that's a guide. I, I would love to do it someday, but I'm busy making videos. <laughs> Wonderful book. This this is a sell. That's a sell in my shop. Also, any hunting stories, anything like this is going to be good. I'm going to break in here with a New York State Forest Commission book with the map in the front folder. This stuff is uh, good material for me. I love the New York stuff, 1891. Whoop, there goes my light. Hold up. Okay, we're back in action. Show you a picture. This thing's like attached to my computer, so when the computer goes dark, so does the light. This is a log jam on the upper Hudson. That's something really cool. Show you some more safari books, and then I'll get chatting with you a little bit. Horn of the Hunter, Robert Rourke. I've had books signed by him. Very good. Hunter Guide to Nyati, I think is how you say it. Again, slanted book, but um, still a good one. Good publication. There we go. So very cool finds. I still have boxes I'm going through. Just one more for the camera. Records of uh, North American Big Game, 14th edition. Beautiful jackets. Mint condition, big glossy pages. It's put out by the uh, the Boone and Crockett Club. Wonderful illustrations. Very happy with this set. The big old bear. Amazing, huh? The lion. I like lions. I don't like seeing them hunted. All right. So you get an idea of the smattering. The, the box has the stain. Again, everything does play its role. Condition is one of the main things that plays its role in pricing these books. All right, guys, so let's talk about the auction a little bit, like I said I would do. Um, the, uh, uh, last year, I did more auctions than I've ever done, had great success. Uh, th this year, I started out with a couple, and this being one of them. Now, th this auction had some, some things going for it, and I'm going to make a longer form content about auctions in general and kind of my strategies and, and, and what I do, right, at, when it comes to these things. But this one was online only. A lot of auctioneers have switched to just doing online and not in-house ones, which I don't really care for too much, but that's how it is. Uh, so this one was in the middle of nowhere. You guys can all find them in your state, I'm sure, on the outliers. And it's always, these are always double-edged swords. There's always risk involved when you're bidding on allotments of books. Um, especially depending on who the auction is. Now, a lot of auctioneers don't like dealing with books, so they'll lot them together to try to move them on out. They don't see 
as much value in them as maybe I do or you guys do. Um, so I bid on these three lots. One had 10 books in them, 15, and then the other one far more than 100. And what, what I try to do, I'll just tell you how I was looking at it. They had a couple things going for it. For one, the auction company did was not going to do shipping. Well, that limits my competition, right? So there's no shipping. Um, the other thing was, was there's good stuff in there. So I'm, I'm, uh, viewing in when it comes to these, a lot of it's like pattern recognition. So I'm recognizing the, the small Safari press emblem toward the bottom of the jacket spine. I'm seeing, uh, slip boxes, which, which may mean uh, limited edition books. I'm, I'm reading the spines, looking stuff up. I'm seeing gold stamping and, in the bindings. Um, so there's a lot of things that are triggered in my mind just based on experience that, that th there's value here to, to, to an extent. One thing that's hard to gauge a little bit is what condition everything's going to be in. They're not going to go through each individual book talking about breaking down its, it, it, the book's condition. So you try to see how it's being stored, how, uh, you know, try to look for signs of, uh, uh disfigurements or, or some mold or, or whatnot and, and, and evaluate. And I knew that the conditions that these books were being stored in was, was not ideal. So I knew there was an even bigger risk there and there'd probably most likely be some fallout, but I thought it was worth enough to, you know, to bet my hand on it basically. Now, when it comes to auctioneers and bidding online and stuff like this, uh, sometimes I am a little bit paranoid about the whole situation. Um, and I'll get into more of that in my longer form video, but if you're interested in a particular book out of the lot, sometimes you might not want to bring as much attention to it more so than need be to the auctioneer. Um, because if they if if they get interested, you don't want to educate them on anything. If that book's in that lot, let it stay in that lot and try to try to win it. Um, but I'll talk to you about the questions that I would ask if I do get them on the phone in roundabout ways. Sometimes it's a little bit of a dance. But say if there's a book there that is potentially a thousand dollar book, and nobody's really recognizing the value in it, it's a little bit out of context. Well, if you bring attention to that book, now the auctioneer might bring attention to it within the lot. And now people with some knowledge on material, their antennas perk up. And now you might have created your own competition. So it's, um, you know, it's a little bit of a funny thing. What happened at this auction was, uh, I'll address the thievery aspect. First of all, what I did was when I won the lots, I took screenshots of them. So I knew what to expect when I got there, what I should be expecting, where everything was. Um, because you can't remember over 100 books. Uh, so that's what I did. When we arrived there, I noticed that there was a small pile of books pointed out that was on the ground. A books I won, and it was part of the bigger lot. They weren't on the shelves. Well, they've been tampered with. So who put them on the ground? I'm looking at the one row and I'm looking at my pictures. I go, there's books missing. So I call over the auctioneer and I said, look, this book's missing here. This one on the other side's missing. He's looking around. He can't find it. I was like, you got to be kidding me. You know, the book was a, a blue cloth gold stamped on Alaskan hunting. Very niche material. Um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, money in the bank. It, and I told him, you know, this was something that I was basing my offer on, you know, this particular book. Now it's gone. Now he offered me a small refund and I took it. Who stole it? I don't think it was the auctioneer or his mother that was working there, the helpers. They seem like really decent people. I, I didn't get that impression at all that they would be like that. Was it the owner? I don't think so. No vested interest. Well, they had an open house, an open viewing two days beforehand. That's where I think it may have gotten swiped. Or it could have been the realtor, realtor's friends. So this scumbaggery stuff does happen. It was clearly an allotment for sale. The number was on the on on the uh, the shelves. So um, now I told him. I said, you know, could have been another dealer. I, I it very well could have been. I said, whoever took these books knew what they were taking. They're pretty choice, you know. 
And uh, it wouldn't be the first time I've I've seen it happen or have had it happen. Um, you know, even at, I prefer in-house auctions. I can handle the material. I can view it, engage it. Um, but those you have to be careful too. If there are lots, people will take stuff out of lots and put it in other ones. And um, it's it's just, I watch them like a hawk if, if I'm in a live auction to see what's going on. Awareness is key. So, um, you know, unfortunately, it, 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 I've had worse experiences, but sometimes when you're bidding like this, like I said, again, it's a roll of the dice a little bit. Some material that I was hoping to be in better condition was in worse than I expected, but then the balance comes where it's the stuff that you, you didn't see or couldn't see. Like the signed Ray Bergman fishing book. I didn't show it. But I have a, a couple uh, hunting books on mountain goats. They're about 100 bucks a piece. So sometimes things balance themselves out. Now, five years ago, this would have been a tremendous buy for me. But at this point in day of age, I need my margins to be a little bit bigger. So it's not like it was a total loss. But... Knowing what I know now, I, I would have operated it a little bit differently. We drove three hours. We're going to just take the stuff and leave. Now, I did an auction. I'm going to try not to go over 10 minutes on this. I did an auction down in PA uh, online. I always air people uh, caution. If you're getting into this business, it's, I, I wouldn't suggest you get into the auctions. There's many different kinds of them. Whoop, hold up. There's many different kinds of auctions. Uh, oh, that's pretty bright. Um, but I, I, I would wait until I get a little bit more grounding and foundation, uh, under me, more experience. So this auctioneer down in PA for, for one, th there was a very scarce book there, very scarce publication, probably found in two universities, as far as I can tell. Um, well, this guy neglected to, to, in his listing say that, the first 12 pages are missing. The introduction was missing. Now, that's just completely wrong. There's no excuse for that. It was also shipped. I've never seen a book ship worse than this one. Um, you know, I still got it at a price to where I'll be able to make money. But it could have sunk me, too. Uh, uh, you know, a, a guy that I would have been willing to spend a lot of money throughout the years with if he had any type of integrity, now we'll never get my business again. So he's a poor example of an auctioneer. And it's it's quite incredible. You know, they get cutesy with these things. They say, well, when it's sold, that's what it is. Um, um, you know, you're not basically getting any help from me. When it's done, it's done. It's unbelievable to me. All you have in this business is uh, trust in a in a good name. And if you start, if that starts corroding, um, you're going to lose people. And so for that short-term gain, you lose out at the end. Uh, I had another auction I, I did. It was a reputable book dealer. This is about four years ago. You guys might even follow him on Instagram. He's a part of a, uh, of a company, um, of, of a, of a renowned book selling auction house. We'll put it that way. I'm not going to say names. If you asked me, I would, I would tell you who it was. Um, so I bought a book and what they left out was that the book had heavy penciling within the front inner board and on the end page. Come on. You know what I mean? Like there's a reason why people will pay premiums for these, uh, higher end book dealers or guys that have been around a lot because you shouldn't have to deal with this kind of garbage. See what I'm saying? Um, and I, I, I talked to him like, what's going on? Uh, uh, well, we made a mistake. Blah, blah. Yeah, mistakes do happen, but this is unacceptable. Never will do business with them again. I, I won't. They shot themselves in the foot. They're fools. Some of these guys, I tend to think like, are you crazy? Like if the if if you hurt somebody in this kind of that maybe over invest too much. And I mean, boy, I, I just. For for one, I wouldn't be able to 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 feel good about that. And for two, do you value your health at all? Well, when these guys come find you, you everybody's easy to find nowadays. And um, you know, if you hurt somebody really bad, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I think people have something wrong with their heads. 
Uh, that's all I think when it when it comes to this stuff. So aux auctions have been great. They have been good to me. When you find a good auctioneer, you want to keep them. Last thing, because it's going on too long. Uh, I I, ha I know a guy, one of the two aux auctioneers I actually trust. He's not a book guy. But when he gets books, he always does his due diligence. He always takes good pictures. He notes everything that's in that book and what's wrong with it. And you can bid confidently and feel assured. That's the guy I'm going to always come to again and again. Someone who's not out to screw somebody else and, and do a, do do this scumbaggery that, that's like vapid anymore. Uh, it's unbelievable. They're almost like crooks to me and thieves. So... Um, and I don't have a tolerance for it whatsoever. So anyhow, guys, I spoke a little too long. It's 12 minutes, but I appreciate you. If you stuck with me, I'll do a longer video on this in the future at some point. And I'll try to get another video out sooner than later. So I hope everybody's well out there. And uh, until next time, we'll see you later.